In our next example of contour lines, I want you to imagine a bathtub or a swimming pool. And imagine someone pokes a hole in the bottom of the bathtub or swimming pool. Then the water starts rushing into that hole. And think about the three-dimensional object that describes the surface of the water as it's going into that hole. So one might be able to sketch that in the following way in three dimensions. If the, if the hole in the bathtub or swimming pool is big enough, then the water right at the center of the drain has a height of zero. But as you go farther outside, farther away from the drain, then the, the water surface gets higher. Now, it's a little hard for me to draw this, but if you can see what it looks like in the xz plane and in the yz plane, and then imagine it's, symmet it's symmetric around the z-axis, so you imagine rotating these two cross-sections around the z-axis, and you would get the whole shape. If you want a concrete mathematical example of a function that looks that way, uh, here's one. z equals, open parentheses, x squared plus y squared close to the one quarter. But I'm not going to work with that. Instead, I want to describe this object using contour lines. So we've got the xy plane. At the origin, that is at x equals 0, y equals 0, we are at the middle of the drain, and so there is no, there's a z equals 0, there's no height. So z, we have z equals 0 right here. At a height of, let's say, this height here, whatever the number is, what we'll get is essentially a, a circle. In other words, if you take a plane parallel to the xy plane and move it up to this height and ask where does it cut the surface of the water, it would cut it at, at some circle. I didn't, now, if let's say the height is 3 here, then this would be z equals 3. If we take a bigger height, let's say z equals 6, and ask where does a plane of height 6 cut cut this, um, sorry about that, that's switching to the Metro interface, uh, Windows 8.1. Uh, where does it cut this surface? It'll it'll cut like so. In other words, we'd get a larger circle for z equals 6. One of the reasons why I picked this as a second example is because sometimes in economics we don't write z equals 0, z equals 3, z equals We just leave out what the z value is. And usually that's okay, because we usually understand what the z values are. But if you do that in this example, then the contour line graph would look like this. And you notice that that's, exact, that's exactly what you would get if in our previous example, the example of the cone that look like that if you stripped out the z values from it. Now the the kind of upside down ice cream cone with the with with the not pointed tip that we were working with last time is a completely different object than this swimming pool example. And yet if you strip out the z values they have exactly the same contour line representation. Uh, a middle uh, a point in the middle, circle like this, circle like this, it's, it would be exactly the same. So the motto is, although we're often going to not indicate what the z-values are, if you want a full description and want your reader to be completely clear about what you're doing, 
you'll have to include the z values. Now, in economics, when it's uh, obvious, then um, well, then it's obvious, and one doesn't have to do it. But I will try to make a habit in this class of always indicating which ve which contra lines have a higher z value or lower z value, because technically that's what you need to do in order to get a correct understanding, a correct representation of the three-dimensional object.